So I think one of the sort of consistent patterns we see when we look at happiness data is that we are social beings. Um, we care about what other people do. We care about what other people think of us. And we care about how we are doing compared to everybody else. Um, so we can see that people care about relative income and not only absolute income. And we can see that when we look at life satisfaction, how happy we are with our life overall, the first uh, dimension of, of sort of uh, well-being, people look how their peers are doing, uh, how they feel they're doing themselves compared to everybody else. And uh, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why we can see that something as social media, Facebook, Instagram, seems to have a negative effect on how people feel about their lives. So essentially, you know, Instagram and, 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 and Facebook is, uh, is uh, of course, instant gratification. We are curious, but also a great tool for sort of uh, self-punishment uh, and really puts your life into perspective sometimes. So when I log on to Facebook, you know, uh, people I know are getting married to, you know, amazing people and, you know, honeymooning in Hawaii and, oh, I took this surfer course and, uh, hey, look at this fantastic apartment I just bought and, oh, I just ran an Ironman and this is on the same day, right? The same person. Um, so I think we, of course, we are aware that what we see on Facebook and on social media are edited lives. They are a distorted picture of reality, yet I think it creates at least that's what it looks like in the data, it creates a really tough backdrop to compare our lives against. Um, so it's something we <clears throat> had an interest in, in the Happiness Research Institute, and we actually did a small study on it, a small experiment a few years ago, where we had 1,100 people sign up for an experiment, and we ran our happiness surveys on them beforehand, and then we randomized them into uh, two groups. So one uh, control group, which continued to do as they usually do, you know, uh, go on Facebook as much as you want and go nuts. And the other group, we asked to take a week's break from Facebook, and then we ran uh, the same study as we had done in the beginning at the end to, to see differences. And to be honest, when we first did the study, I actually didn't think we would see any effect because so many factors uh, have an impact on happiness. And also, if we assume that the theory is correct, that, that Facebook distorts our perception of reality, well, that's a distortion that has been accumulating over time. So just shutting off one week, would it, would it have an impact? I, I didn't think so, to be honest. But after the experiment, we could see that pretty much every indicator we measured in terms of life satisfaction, quality of life, um, self-esteem, self uh, satisfaction with our social life, our ability to concentrate, envy, a range of things, people that had taken the, the week off Facebook uh, were significantly improved in those indicators. That was a few years ago. Um, to be honest, I think everyone that participated in that experiment and had that experience, I'm sure they're back on Facebook. <laughs> so I think, I, think that's, that's, I think that's a key challenge for us a lot of times. I think we do have an understanding of what drives well-being in the short term and in the long term. And yet I think we sometimes fail to follow through on that. I think we also, I mean, we, I think we get a little kick going on Facebook, seeing those little, little red squares. So I think we get some instant gratification from it. I think that's also why we can't help ourselves. And I think there's also some good things to say about social media. I think it helps, uh, for instance, grandparents to, to, to sort of stay in touch with their grandchildren and, and so on. So I think there are wonderful things to say about it. Uh, I'm just saying that, that there might also be some, some negative effects. And, and we can see that, that social comparisons are a, a pattern in, in happiness data. In order to try and overcome the negative effect of, for instance, uh, Facebook and, and social media on, on well-being, both for ourselves and for everybody else, uh, perhaps could be, um, you know, three ideas. Um, first, perhaps try and limit the amount we uh, spend on social media. 
Um, also to overcome that sort of little voice a lot of us perhaps have at the back of our mind asking, should you be on Facebook right now? Should you go on Facebook? Maybe there's something happening on Facebook. I've seen people uh, work well with setting a, a specific time on the day or a specific weekday uh, that they go on Facebook. So for instance, okay, I'll check face Facebook once a day at eight o'clock. And I know that's the time where I do it, so I'm not constantly asking myself during the day, should this be the time where I check Facebook? So you agree with yourself, it's once a day, it's eight o'clock. That's one way. Um, I think another way also to sort of to sort of create a more nuanced and more real image of how people's lives look like. We can also start with ourselves. Um, instead of just posting the Iron Man photos and the fantastic house you just bought, also post some of our failures and how life looked like on average Mondays where we're having leftovers. Uh, interestingly, one of the posts I created uh, on, on, on Facebook, which was received uh, with, with a lot of positive comments and, and sort of uh, interactions, was uh, a picture I posted of a yeast that had gone bad in my fridge. Uh, so the story was, which I also posted on, on Facebook, was for some reason, and this is total confession time now, I had watched, uh, I think it's called The Big Bake Off, like it's a baking show, don't ask me why I was watching it, but I had watched this show about cakes and I thought maybe I should start baking. And next day I went out and I bought yeast and had imagined I would start baking and then a month later I just, I could see that that was the cheapest dilution I had ever bought uh, and I had to throw out the yeast. But I posted that on Facebook and people really engaged with it and thought it was hilarious. So perhaps also show some of the, some of the less uh, positive sides could be a second step. And I think perhaps thirdly, because we have a tendency to compare ourselves with people that are doing well, that perhaps are doing better than us, perhaps it's also good to start to get more awareness of how people that are less fortunate than us work. Um, and, and sort of build a sense of gratitude of what we do have. Um, I remember when I was working for a youth counselor for the, the, the Red Cross, uh, after a shift where I had heard these uh, stories from, from young people that were going through really tough times, uh, was a time that, that I, even though my life was far from perfect, uh, did feel a lot of gratitude for what I did have in, in my life. So, so perhaps also, you know, um, Focusing on, on what we do have is, uh, is a way forward to overcome this social comparison.